Now let's take a look at some examples. We'll go through the full process, verifying the conditions, constructing our confidence interval, and then writing a conclusion. So in 2005, there are 28,534 infant deaths in America. Of these, 6.3% were due to maternal complications, 4% were due to accidents or unintentional injuries. Can we conclude that a larger proportion of infant deaths are due to maternal complications than accidents or unintentional in injuries? So the first thing we want to do is identify which sample will be sample one and which sample will be sample two. So in this case, 6.3% due to maternal complications will have that be our first sample and the 4% due to accidents will be our second sample. So N1, our sample size for the first sample, is 28,534. Our first sample proportion <clears throat> is going to be 0.063, or 6.3%, which means we can calculate N1 times P1 hat to be approximately 1,798, and N1 times 1 minus P1 hat to be approximately 26,736. So we can see right away we've got number of successes, number of failures much larger than 10. So our conditions are met for the first sample. For our, for our second sample, we're drawing from that same group, so the 28,534. Our second sample proportion is 4%, or 0 0.04, meaning that N1 times, or I'm sorry, N2 times P2 hat will be approximately 1,141, and N2 times 1 minus P2 hat is approximately 27,393. So again, in both cases, we have well over the minimum of 10 successes and 10 failures. So the conditions are met to go ahead and construct a confidence interval. So we've identified our two sample sizes and our number of successes in each case, the 1798 and the 1141. And we want to use a confidence level of 99%. So we'll go to stat, select proportion stats. And in this case, we'll be using two sample with summary. So the number of successes in our first sample was the 1,798 out of 28,534 observations. In sample two, we had 1,141 successes out of 28,534 observations. We're going to select confidence interval for P1 minus P2. And we'll set our confidence level to 0.99, or 99%. So we're going to generate a few values here. First, it's going to give us those values that we input. It's going to generate the sample difference. So this is the difference between P1 hat and P2 hat, our sample proportions. So it's a little bit bigger than zero. And then we get our lower and upper limit for our confidence interval. So now we can write a complete answer to this problem. So we can start off by saying the conditions are met to construct a two-sample estimate for P1 minus P2 because we have at least 10 successes and 10 failures in each of the two samples. We constructed a 99% confidence interval, so we can say the 99% confidence interval estimate for P1 minus P2 is 0 0.0183 to 0 0.0278. So what we're interested in answering is, can we conclude that a larger proportion of infant deaths are due to maternal complications? All values in our confidence interval are greater than zero, 
So we conclude that P1 is greater than P2, which in this case means that the proportion of infant deaths due to maternal complications is greater than the proportion due to accidents or unintentional injuries. So yes, the data does support this conclusion. So again, we verified the conditions, constructed the interval, and then pro provided an interpretation, both um, in terms of just the values P1 and P2, and stating clearly what our conclusion means, and then making that contextual statement. So being very specific, tying it back to the context of the problem, so that someone could basically read that last statement and understand what we're concluding. In example two, uh, we have a data providing information from a survey about uh, people who were asked to respond to the question, thinking back to Dr. King's dream of racial equality, do you think that dream has now been realized? In this case, the, group is being, the groups are being broken up into whites who responded and blacks who responded, giving us two different proportions to consider. So we'll let whites be sample one and blacks be sample two. So our sample size for the first sample is 796. Our first sample proportion is 0 0.49, which means N1 times P1 hat will be approximately 390. And N1 times 1 minus P1 hat will be approximately 406. For the second group, blacks who responded, our sample size is 376. Our sample proportion, P2 hat, is 0 0.54. So we can calculate our number of successes as 203. And our number of failures as 173. So we have more than 10 successes, more than 10 failures in each case. So the conditions are met to go ahead and construct the two sample confidence interval. In this case, we want to construct a 95% confidence interval. So we can go back to the edit screen for this two sample proportion summary and update it with our new values. Now we have our first sample or our first number of successes is 390 with a sample size of 796. And for the second group, we had 203 successes out of 376 people. Change our confidence interval to be 0 0.95 and click Compute. So again, we're going to calculate that sample difference. So according to the sample results, we're getting a negative value, which means that the first sample, the proportion of whites who agree with this statement is a little bit smaller. But we're going to base those conclusions off our confidence interval, so that lower and upper limit. So again, we can start by saying that the conditions are met to construct a confidence interval estimate for P1 minus P2, since both our samples have at least 10 successes and 10 failures. The 95% confidence interval estimate for P1 minus P2 is in this case negative 0 0.1111 to 0 0.0112. So in this case, our values range from negative to positive. So we know that 0 is contained somewhere in that interval. So since 0 is contained in our interval, We conclude that P1 equals P2, since 0 must be a likely value for the difference of those two proportions. 
This means that the proportion of whites and blacks who believe that Dr. King's dream has been realized are equal. So the question was asking is, can we conclude that the proportion of whites who believe Dr. King's dream has been successful, has been realized, is equal to the proportion of blacks who hold this view? So yes, the data supports this conclusion. 